Um, it's five to ten, and let's do lunch in the light of the release of those top-level BBC expenses. A quick scroll through the executive board expenses for 2008 to 2009 reveals that the word lunch appeared more than 70 times, often after the word business. The Director-General, Mark Dudar, for example, made a £287 claim for a business lunch to discuss issues. We don't know how many issues or how many people there were discussing them, but we do know it's time to poll views now on what use the business lunch, how many people still use it. Murray Steve is senior lecturer in strategic management at Cranfield School of Management. I think it's best to describe it as a declining role. I'm old enough to remember the 70s and the 80s where power lunches were the norm. And in fact, quite a lot of, of business and work was done over lunch, even though there was quite a lot of alcohol generally consumed. But today, I'd say it's not quite extinct, but it's certainly greatly reduced to how it used to be back in the, in, in the 80s, the boom days of the city in particular. So it is declining. It still has a role, but from personal experience and colleagues, I'm not aware that much business really gets done over lunch these days. Mm. Reason for that would be that most people actually spend lunch in a work environment or grab a quick lunch such as a sandwich. Yes. So, I mean, are you saying that um, lunch is for wimps? It's kind of it, it's kind of become a bit like that. I mean, I know some people who think you know they feel guilty you know having an hour for lunch. So having two hours for lunch, two hours for lunch, unless there's a very clear purpose attached to it, you know, and, and some lightly valued outcome, then lunch for wimps is not a not a bad analogy. Well, who would defend the business lunch? Surprisingly, an expert in the field, a lady who lunched or rather business lunched. I'll let her introduce herself. My name is Robin Jay. I am the author of The Art of the Business Lunch, Building Relationships Between 12 and 2. I hosted more than 3,000 client lunches when I was in sales, and I saw my sales increase by more than 2,000%. So I originally wrote the book to share my tips and techniques for building better relationships by introducing a social aspect. Have you ever been known as the queen of the business lunch? <laughs> Yes, my clients started calling me that because they always knew that I knew where to go and what to do and what to accomplish during a business lunch. We've just heard from a lecturer at a top business school here in the UK that the business lunch is dying, that lunch really is for wimps. No, not at all. Not at all. Some magic happens when you break bread with someone. In fact, if you Google breaking bread, you'll find more than 20 million responses about what can be accomplished by sharing a meal with someone. But then you're not just sharing, are you? You're charging it to someone else. But the point of what you're doing with a business lunch is getting to know someone. People prefer to do business with people they like. And there's no better way to get to know someone than sharing a meal with them, finding out how you can help them more with their business and provide better service for them. In fact, one of the very first stories in my book is about a gentleman, Art Fettig, who was being romanced by a company that wanted him to come to business with them. He went to lunch with this gentleman, and at the end of the lunch, the waitress wheeled over a big cart of desserts, expensive desserts. The gentleman said, let me take one of those, each one, home for my family. And he put it on his expense account. So Art said, I don't want to do business with these people. Well, he, he wanted a doggy bag. Exactly, an expensive doggy bag. So Art decided not to do business with them, and six months later, the company was bankrupt. So a business lunch, a social setting, is very revealing. It reveals your character. But we're living in very straitened economic times. There's a recession in the United States and in the UK. Should all this type of luxury, i.e., you're paying for my lunch, be banned. I really don't think so. I think it's such a critical part of doing business. You know, I also talk about how the old power lunch, the three martini lunch of the 60s is long gone. And I definitely see a modification coming up, a greater depth of accountability. We're really in a changing, not just challenging, but in a changing time and a challenging economy. So I think that what we did 10 years ago isn't going to work 10 years from now.